Welcome to Two Month Review, the weekly podcast where you take a giant book, in this case, Ed Park's Same Bed, Different Dreams, chop it up like a piece of wood, take each one of those little parcels, toss it into the fire, see how it burns, evaluate that fire, get warmed by its intellectual flame, and then talk about it here on this on this podcast. <laughs> Chad Post of Open Letter Books, joined as always by Brian Wood, author of Joy Time Killbox. Hey, Brian. Morning, Chad. Uh is this like NyQuil or whiskey? What's going on? <laughs> you told me you want to do intros. So I, I've been doing oh, no, new yeah. intros the past few weeks. I, I agree. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to do a burning book metaphor, but sure. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's burn some books. We might as well start with the... <laughs> I don't know. It feels like really racist. To <laughs> burn our, our, if we're going to start burning books, let's start with uh, like, fuck Korea. Like, what, what the hell, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about burning stuff because uh, you're here in Wisconsin and I've been chopping wood, like chopping it. It's super fun. Super I've been, fun. I've been begging to do uh, some Ayn Rand on this. Yeah. On this, on this <laughs> Couldn't we start with that if we're going to do we, the book? Uh, we did, we did a, a new tradition sort of for uh, buying books that you have not read for other people. So Chloe, I, Chloe's like, I don't know. Like, I want a book that I want to pick out myself. I don't want you to pick out a book. I thought about getting her, getting her the Fountainhead, and be like, "You have to read this. You, it's it, a gift. Change your life. You have to read this. You, have to, you will never see things the same way again." I know. I've asked before. Have you read the Fountainhead? I actually have. I read okay. that in college. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> when I first heard of who she was and like had objections to her, I hate read that over mm-hmm. like a semester in college. But I don't really remember shit. And like, it didn't have any impact on me. I thought it was boring. And like, um, it really was just reading it to be like, I know what this is. So I can make fun of it, sort of thing. No, I, I feel the same way about like Mein Comp. I'm afraid I might like it. So I don't want to read it, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Trust me, change your life, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, before. You know what? I, I like my life. I'm good. And I don't want it changed at all. So I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> thank, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I we've talked about this before, but there's a huge chunk of Mind Comp in the sixth volume of My Struggle by Knoskar. So I've read Mind Comp and read him reading Mind Comp so in that book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so is, just, there anything, is there anything that's like I don't know, controversial like that that's come out recently? Like what what's the book that gets like passed around like you gotta like for me it wasn't even controversial controversial but i remember like everybody talking about like fight club wanting to read fight club and like oh my right. god you gotta check it out. and then they find out it's written by someone who's gay and it's like oh my god it's written and the author's gay it's incredible you have to check it like okay all right like that was like always going around around the late 90s like with rape yeah. culture kind of stuff and obviously the movie helps too but i'm trying to think if there's something now like what, what would be passed around on a college campus where it's like this will change your life book I, I that i'm not sure but i think that the one like um Last Exit to Brooklyn or um, Train Spotting were ones like that back when. But nowadays, mm-hmm. I don't know that there is. I don't, unless students talk about anything that's like like that, they'll talk about like YA books, but nothing. I don't know if there there must be, but I don't know what it would be. It's not going to be new. Uh, it wasn't life changing, but like Bluets was getting passed around. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, like 10 years ago. Was it like, what, 10 years ago, maybe? 10, 15 yeah. years ago? And like, yeah. oh my God. I read this like this is like incredible like i remember reading it, like yeah it's like a it's a relationship with a trans person like okay like yeah like, it's good like but it didn't i don't know like oh you know what would have been for a time would have been the tanahisi coats book oh um, yeah my mom even read that yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely was one that like people like this will change your life this will change the way that you yeah. Think about and see things. It's slightly different than what you're talking about in terms of like aesthetics, like Fight Club, the book. I don't know, man, but like I never read that. But the movie everyone has such a boner for, for like its yeah. tricksiness. And I always thought it was like too cute by half. It's a little bit like uh, I went and saw Poor Things, uh, which, you know, obviously this is this is not to be this is not to be broadcast live on a YouTube stream or a podcasting service, but um delky archive reissued poor things back when i was there the first time there's even like the contract is is addressed to me and is signed i didn't sign it but I, the, all the email correspondence about the the contract and all of it is addressed to me from like 2004 
And then we were reissuing it now to tie into the movie, got the whole book relayed out, redesigned, retype set, proofed, scanned, you know, everything done. And then uh, it turned out that John never re-signed the, um, the renewal. So we didn't, the, and they wouldn't sell us the rights. Like they wouldn't yeah. renew the rights at that point. And uh, so there exists, I believe, 19 copies of the Delkey version of that book, which are in the storage shed in Rochester, totally not for sale, just sitting there in case, you know, in case I, in case I go a little rogue and start selling shit on eBay. I'm going to run it through like a bunch of like fake Korean servers. I'll have the Lazarus group. Uh, you know, figure out how to sell it. <laughs> sell those books for people. Yeah, some gloat uh, <laughs> subsidiary will have to to figure that out. Yeah, that that but that movie is okay. I don't like it as much as everyone else seems to like it, but I don't really like movies that much. I don't like to judge things by the trailer unless it's a uh, like a Wes Anderson film, and then I totally can. But it feels a little precious. Feels a lot. Pre There's a lot of preciousness in the the set design and the shots. I do have a story about this though that is super funny. Is that I went to see it on whatever Christmas Eve, right? And it was playing here in Minneapolis at this at the Alamo Draft House, like the the like the the famous Alamo Draft House, been franchised. You know, you can get there's a full service bar menu at your seat, so on and so forth. And to buy the ticket online, what it would not let me do is buy a ticket by myself. There's like almost no seats taken in the theater, like maybe six. But it would not let me buy a seat that was like on its own. It had to be like next to another, a pre, an occupied seat or like on the far end of the aisle. So I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. So I bought one right in the middle of the it's front. It's like an airline the algorithm. Front. You want to make sure everything's over, oversold, you know, for the people yes. that just to come to the movie. <laughs> like, so I go into this movie theater, right? Like, it just like, just says dude go to this movie theater and uh go to the seat and it's at a table with this young woman next to me who's probably like in her early 30s there are five people in this theater there are seats everywhere but to my left one seat over is this younger woman probably in her 20s and to my right sharing a table with me is this woman in her 30s probably came on her own to just be like i'm gonna come watch this movie and suddenly next thing she knows this like creepy old dude is sharing a table with her watching Emma Stone's boobies on screen for two and a half hours. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I, should I try and move? But they had you, like, they gave you your credit card. It was all tied to, like, that seat location to buy stuff. I was like, I don't know. Do I move? Do I say something? I just decided to ignore the entire situation and said zero words to this woman at all. <laughs> just nothing. Just ignore her. Straight I up, right? I thought of the like I just like awkward situations uh, and like you know amplifying them. It's one of my favorite favorite things to do. I'm thinking a great way to amplify that if I were to like fictionalize it would you lean over when there's you know new, new Emma Stone nudity and you'd be like, hey, uh, sh there's an oral sex scene in the in the curse. Have you seen that? Oh, it's so good. This is why I don't go to movies. This is why I don't talk to people. <laughs> she, she, got, she got both of them got unlimited popcorn bowls. And I was almost like, can I just have a bit of that? Like I thought that was the one time she set it down on the table. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to reach my hand in there. That's not cool. Don't Bring a, plastic, do a plastic bag of your own popcorn in your coat. Yeah. <laughs> first don't time. Worry. Don't worry about my own. <laughs> what is this, your first time? My mom made my, me trail mix. <laughs> my, <flat>. my <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, man, man, you mentioned the curse. The curse, I could go on and on and on about the curse. Forever. Well, we're talking about the curse of Korea <laughs> between Japan and uh, China <laughs> instead. Yeah, yeah. It's a little different bit of a curse, but uh, somewhat of a curse nonetheless. So, Today, right, I don't know, you you missed last week because you were sick. Um, I, if you listen, if anyone listens to that podcast, like, woo! If you get to the get to the Andrew Merritt part, because my voice was gone and barely could make it through that at all with like a fever dream. So we talked a bit about like the Laos sex toy. We talked about the game. Um, I sort of skipped over the Parker Jotter section though with the the letters and him recovering from the attack because I was like that was when I was like truly starting to fall asleep. 
and and pass out. But if you have anything to add from like last week's section of things that stood out to you, like let's start there. Uh, I think what I would add is um, just the way now. Um, I think we can kind of see the seams of the way things are starting to come together, and it's almost as if like the stitching is starting to tighten to to tighten up those seams, and we're starting to see everything kind of like patched together at this point in the book. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like the, a lot the, of the, the goes in the cycles and the circles. You're seeing like the assassinations. You're seeing the yeah, um, everything kind of coming together. Right, and the and the Perker that one was that last week was a fun one because it was the two twenty three thirty three section. Mm. Um, well, the game, we, we talked about the the daughter uh, and the game, and we're seeing the the book turn into a game, and then so it's kind of like. Yeah, we're starting to, to get a, to get a glimpse of how how it all fits together. And he's in the hospital, wild wording with his like mm -hmm. journal, so on and so forth. It's super fun. Um, so I, uh, like when I was sick and bored or whatever, I rewatched um, Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lydon. Oh wow! Um, great film, but uh, it does one of those things where like it has an opening scene that basically captures what the next two plus hours is going to be right and it's, and it's barry sitting it's like the younger version of him he's sitting uh playing cards he's playing a game with uh with a woman i believe it's his cousin and and she wants him to make a pass at her and he's just refuses like he's just he's just a dumb child and mm -hmm. she's like making advances he's like i'll tell you what barry i'm gonna hide my scarf and you have to find it with your hands, okay? I'll make it very easy for you. Close your eyes. And she takes her scarf, uh, like the silk, out of her hair, and she tucks it into her bosom, and it's like, you know, like spilling out of her her corset at this point. She goes, "Open your eyes, Barry," and she like looks down, and she was like, "Find it, Barry," and he's like, "I can't," <laughs> right? Like I won't. But like, and then like that's the opening scene. It's like it's 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 very sensual. It's funny, but it's like it's a child games are being played and there's things that can happen if you play these games and so the rest of it is, is and i feel like we're kind of uh with, with ed's book i get that same sense of thinking back on it now like all these little scenes that we're getting are like this here's here's a small example um real time of the games we're playing and you'll you'll understand the rules as we as we go along and right of it and it's it's really smart really fun like a great way to to introduce things and it gave me that same feeling absolutely that makes total sense yeah yeah, yeah. so with this week's section we're up to page 256 we're like exactly halfway through the book um and we have two sections that that took place one is the part of the sin section still september the asterisk um and then a dream dream three 1884 through 1965 for the kp uh, G, um, history. And that one's like broad and a lot. So let's I maybe mean, start with the easier bit, which is the asterisk or the, uh, the sin section. And the main thing in here, aside from like our, our character soon has like been reading the dreams, thinking about the dreams, thinking about the book, the KPG, he's looking stuff up, finding that a lot of it seems to be factual and historical that echoes written, but like some of it he can't find uh, there's not a lot of information about the KPG online. He's not seeing things on Gloat. And then his friend comes and gets hired at Gloat. Talk, talks a little bit about his history there. And then his friend um, Loa Ding gets hired because they buy Gloat by Slanted Plus Enchanted, her uh, her magazine. And they're going to like incorporate that into some sort of Gloat uh, event or um, what do we call it? Like vertical or something. But uh, that's basically, and then they find, he finds Dream 3. They're in like their little hidden space that he shows her where no, none of the electronics work. You're sort of like off the grid within the middle of their like starfish shaped uh, strange, you know, office building, very Apple sounding or whatever. And they find Sprout who had been missing the dog and he has Dream 3 in his mouth. I don't know if there's anything else from that section. It's really just there to kind of move along to get dream three seemingly yeah it feels very like for lack of a better word expositional yeah 
Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still like funny. It still has kind of, you know, Ed's, Ed's humor and whimsy in it. And uh, the, his racial humor is like so, so spot on and great in this. It's, it's really like, I hate to say it's delightful, but like, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I love the, I love the way he's like juxtaposing the the levity uh, levity with like the like the harshness of what it takes like what the KPG uh, went through what the people went through the all that sorrow all that pain and then on the surface level uh, stuff we get like this this like laughter I don't know like these first world problems and this laughter and then beneath it is like the start of how 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 things began and created it was really. I love the way that goes back and forth. It works so well. Yeah, it really does. Like this part, the one of the main parts in here is their uh, security man Otto, uh, who keeps calling him Bruce after Bruce Lee. <laughs> he's like, yeah. like, he's like calls him Bruce Lee, and then uh, he's playing the game, the Hegemon game, and and soon's like, "Are you close to putting together the tan gun?" I said, like, "One and no." He gave me a look of pain and longing. Not even close, Bruce. <laughs> Which is very funny. There's also the. The good line about uh, the LGBTQ Omega Alliance. And he's like, I was getting old. I didn't even know what the Omega stood for. It would have been too gauche to ask. <laughs> it feels <laughs> nice, nice sort of like reference to people in our generation that don't don't necessarily know all the things. I, I'm the type. Of, I have to go to like Urban Dictionary half the time to understand any of the references in my in my students' papers anymore. I, and then I just end up having like lots of weird sex knowledge. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Just yeah. that you should not know, but yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And do, you so she's like, gun, the, do you think the tan gun is the, uh, is like a play on the, on the gun that shot Ito and the assassin, yeah. right? I his name, it, like his, like you smashed his name together. You get tan. That's true. Thomas on. Right. Huh. I hadn't Nothing. thought of that. But I just thought the gun is always like there as like there's so many assassinations and so many pistols. Well, that's and that's very like, prevalent, right? Like th there's some of those like echoes that keep reoccurring or yeah. things. But I thought like, if you take Thomas on and kind of like smash it, it's like tan. tan. Yeah, that's true. There are uh, the, the, speaking of speaking of guns, you saw that the guy that invented the Glock died. No, oh no. Yes. I, I, don't like, I don't like anybody. To, I didn't see that. But. Yeah, Mister Mister Glock. I forget what his first name was, but whatever it was, he he, he passed away. Captain Glock. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a great like uh, superhero <laughs> name. <laughs> like he'd be like a friend. He'd be like a friend of like Peacemaker or something, right? Captain. Glock. Oh yeah, right yeah. on. Captain yeah. Glock over here. He's always espousing, here. always espousing the the beauty of the Glock. You know what the great thing about the Glock is? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> like I'm good. I'm fine. No more facts about the Glock, buddy. You had your moment. Tank, it's still gonna shoot. Dig it in mud, bury it, get it up the next day. It's still, you can still depend on it. Much more than my ex. <laughs> depend on it much more than my ex-wife, bitch. <laughs> how many? Captain how Glock. Many? Nobody. Cares. Captain Glock. Nobody cares about your your past relationships and your stupid guns. <laughs> Your Captain Glock. How many? How many like song lyrics do you think reference Glocks? Uh, I don't know. That'd be good. To, that's an AI question. That I'm sure you could have answered. Oh yeah, it's true. I probably can. So yeah, so that that action just really does move move us a bit. I mean, it brings back to Slanted plus Enchanted, which mm -hmm. leads into the music that we'll use for the for this podcast this week, obviously from uh, the Pavement reference. Uh, and especially because on Sign and Enchanted is the song Two States about uh, California uh, wanting two states. So uh, kind of perfect for this Korea section, which we do then get kind of to the division of Korea almost um, in our Dream 3, which is 1884 through 1965. And I guess we really do get to the division. But this is one. These are getting wilder to me. So and they're hard for me to follow. And on some level, the first ones are so kind of condensed to a couple storylines like the years are a little bit more uh close together so the bands aren't that large the second one dream two is like 1901 to 1909 here we have this yeah. huge range and all these people and i'm not I, i'm always having to remind myself of which character is which or which historical figure is which historical figure um for what they did 
but this one seems to center it does center mostly around bay uh what's her initial last name who is super complicated and, and correct me if i get this right so uh um she takes what was her first name is her is bay something with a b as well Boonham. bay Boonham. Boonham. Yeah, yeah there it is Boonham. um okay so she tell me if i got this right so ito adopts her but basically she's his mistress concubine whatever in his working with him while well, he's in japan but ruling korea then ends up in king uh ko young's cabinet or in his space because she gets exiled right i forget why she leaves um maybe she's sent there uh she goes to seoul to act as a translator for king kojong her translations are inaccurate <laughs> because she doesn't think he deserves the whole story then she helps get his wife queen min murdered um so she's working against korea for japan goes back to japan um has is also then integral i think i'm skipping some stuff here um, but then is integral in helping get Thomas on. She in infiltrates the whole circle of the Nine Finger Club, gets Thomas on to the right place, warns Ido, and then also makes sure that Ido is murdered, <laughs> and then claims that she's been working for the K KPG the whole time with Yi San Song, who she brought to Japan to start to enact a revolution. So she's playing all sides. She's like Black Widow of like the yeah. Korean Japanese universe at this time right kind of let's see page 253 does it pretty succinctly here oh perfect that she grew up bay bunam daughter of an officer of the old korean court that she was the one who lured prince ito to harbin in the first place back in 1909 to put him in the path of thomas on's gun is this just a doddering account of a crone her confusing saga involves a cipher a playing card any number of pistols she insists the story is true there's more she claims beginning in 1919 she secretly worked for the kpg she was so deep undercover that only one officer knew of her position Yi sang the strange right okay so yeah so she's she's on both sides she's mm -hmm. integral to getting ito shot she helps like she's the one who sends the cipher the card that tips him off all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and she is part of both playing kind of both sides against the middle for a time here um and is this like a, of, a reference at all you think to the original remember the manchurian candidate with uh frank sinatra oh yeah with with uh the korean war he he comes back from the korean war they use playing cards to start to turn him into an assassin right you, like, you remember like uh, what happened to uh, Saran Saran? Yeah, which was also referenced in yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this in this work. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's all coming around. I, I she I don't think is a real person. I don't find anything online of her really existing. But yes, it reminded me cinematically of, of uh the original Manchurian candidate. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Although she's like sort of directing things though, too, right? <laughs> Whereas in that it's like the operative or they, they get the note or they get the cards and then act off of them are triggered. Yeah. It's like a trigger. Turn on. Cause there's um, that famous scene where like his, she, she dresses up as like the queen of hearts or something like that. Like a, like a, like a playboy bunny outfit with a queen of heart. And that's what like, I'm trying to remember, I watched it about 30 years ago. So <laughs> I, I mean, literally, yeah. I, I mean, we're, probably a, we're probably about the age, like, I don't know if many people too much younger than us are watching 1960s weird spy cinema. Uh, also, we're probably one of the last, did you have to actually do a typing class on a typewriter? Oh, yeah. 100%. I, did, uh, That's how I, can I, so fast. I remember those exact kind of books that flip up and you'd have to go through the exercise one, you know, home row. Yep. Uh, man, that brought back memories. That that part of this. Uh, yep. Game. I I love typing class. Honestly, I thought it was super fun. I was pretty good at it, and I'm pretty fast at it. But like the sound of it, with like everyone clacking away, and the sort of like, dang, it's like really re like 
like relaxing in a way. It, it's got a bit of that like newsroomy vibe where everyone's like clack clack clacking and like doing work. That's like that's when the news was good. It was just white men smoking cigarettes with a bunch of typewriters and hats. They had hats, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know that was the news. That they, was the news. They had a good old crime <laughs> desk. <laughs> some lucky reporter would solve some mystery, uh, some serial killer murder. That's when that's when serial killers sent their messages to newspapers too. Now they just don't even yeah. give a fuck. Yeah, and the and the women were just there for the for harassment. Harassment and the social columns, the gossip. No, that really that that took me back. Uh, I was like, oh man, I remember having typing class. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's Re that learns how to type in here, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And Sigmund Re, and he learns how his his son passes away uh, tragically. He learns how to type, typing, 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 uh, going through all these different. Uh, like the lessons that you get for a typing class. And then it ends with like a long sort of poem of sort. And here comes your Manchurian candidate again. So it's a long bit about like years ago, you heard the faint whispers of impending trouble. It was so far away, it seemed as if, it's, as if it might be on Mars or some other planet. Later you saw columns of smoke rising at a distance. And it's like interstitially uh, has like a different voice of who is the you that he writes about that he scolds and it goes on. Can you still say, quote, let the Koreans, the Manchurians, and the Chinese fight their own fight? Is it none of your business? Who is the you? And then it very ends at the end with the you. Well, it's a, this is a, we're a paragraph worth reading, I suppose. I cannot persuade myself to see how you can escape clashing with a bully while making it stronger all the time. It is not clear that, you, that when he becomes powerful enough to tackle you, he will surely attack you as he's already attacked and robbed every one of his weaker neighbors. The you is the USA. And then talks about entering... World War II that December. Um, we also have Kim Jong Kim Il Sung coming back from exile to Korea, which will lead to the Korean War and the split between North and South Korea, and all that part comes comes to bear right here too. Yeah, I, th I think you can really feel with this section and the one before um, the momentum is really starting to kind of like. I don't know. I feel like the I feel like the machine's humming and uh, the momentum's going now. I, I I have that too. Although I also have the point in this section in particular when I was reading it that there's these disparate parts. There's a Thomas on. There's Singman Ree. There's um, OK Kim, the writer. There's uh, Philip Jai Song who uh, you know Americanizes his name. Uh, there's one more part. Was is it Singman Ree or yeah Singman Ree who meets the uh, woman in Vienna? Where does he wherever he meets her and they get they're gonna get married she like is partially italian is white um then there's uh bay and there's all those different and Yi song are saying and these are ones where like all these different disparate people are all doing these things and earlier on it seemed almost like it was more plotted like there was more of a conspiracy and this one feels like to me like the threads of the conspiracy are loosened like rather than that direct tie of like they all they all do cut off their finger they all do like are part of this Korean provisional government so to speak but the idea of it being like a really tightly woven set of plans for what the KBG does feels like much less the case in this section to me it feels a lot more like these players are out on these different places and all these kind of circumstances lead them to these situations but that they're not orchestrated through like one central committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. The other part, the way this dream differentiated itself from the others, you had mentioned before, like it's it's a larger chunk of time. Yeah. Uh, but it has this generational feel to it with uh, with like with a parent and child and lines being crossed that like like. Genius. Yeah. Almost like like when you when you get to like when you're reading like Genesis proto history and like after the after Babel, you start getting like genealogies of people and it sets up the Abraham saga. Like it, it reminds me, it has that feeling of like, yeah, like it, it, it expands a lot of time, but it's showing generations. It's showing the end of someone's name, the start of another, like, and, mm -hmm. and, and it ends almost with like everybody dying in their old age. Uh, yeah. so I, th I thought it was, that was a really something that jumped out to me about this, this section as well. And it, it sort of, it does, it does manage to help shift the, 
the purpose of the KBG a little bit in that for a while they're like, you know, we got to escape from Japan's rule, which is really like the key mm-hmm. that Korea doesn't want to be. Korea wants to be independent, wants to be not taken over by Japan. The warning against the USA is like, you can't just keep feeding Japan because they're going to like try and get you and come at you, which is obviously ends up being the case. Um, and then now, instead of it being about a common enemy of Japan, they end up at the Korean War and the two states are, are created. And so the KPG maybe switches from being a organization that's anti-Japanese and pro Korean independence to pro Korea as one nation again. Yep. A dying, yeah, I, a dying almost, dream, the only dream. Based on all these like world historical events, like they're, you know, they're they're under rule and then divided for like so so long. Yeah. The the one thing I'm I'm curious to see how it ties in is with the present. Um you know, with what, which I kind of like take as our as our main protagonist and our main vehicle for the piece, because like I, I can see how the the twenty three thirty three with like I don't know like old worlds and new worlds and uh, like history and new history and uh, trying like the people being exiled and finding new lands and then wanting to come back and right like I I can see that and I can see how that ties in with like um with speculative fiction and with science fiction and with and and with the way that that's moving and i'm just curious now with uh with slow press and with gloat and with discovering this manuscript how how that all st- how that that's the, maybe the fun discovery that I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah the 2333 also seems to be part of like the code aspect yeah. and, um, the, and- and the games and the daughters doing the three three D printing of pieces and like yeah I can I can start seeing like maybe is this going to be part of how it, it all comes together how it all connects how it all yeah and Parker's daughter is in the Korean War mm-hmm. sees his UFO there comes in contact with the KPG possibly so there's yeah. like that thread of like then brings that back and starts writing these things that they steal that was like one of the funner fun sections with last week was the bit about um the like making the game and then going to the dowager's apartment and having it taken and it just being gone out in the wind but we were talking about this is that you can't just make a, a game out of a book you need to like acquire the rights to that to that process you can't, can't just be like oh guess what it was We're funny because gonna- I, I actually watched a whole documentary on the the birth of dungeons and dragons and like this small little wisconsin suburb and you know this little white house and just nerds in the basement. Nerds in the basement. <laughs> Writing what down in a composition book, right? And then yeah, so. what was that guy saying? Gary, it's like with a G and an X is involved. Uh, I just I just remember around the time that documentary came out. Uh, I think it was Sam. How do you say his name? Sam Lipset. Oh yeah, some I, let's say he had a he had a short story that was anthologized in Best American Short Fiction. It was called Dungeon Master, if I recall, about a mm-hmm. about a dungeon master that kills himself and like what legacy he leaves behind. Uh, oh, man. That's like, yeah. uh, and that part that informed my story. That's in my story collection uh, called USS Flag, actually. Right. So there's how the sausage is made. There we go. So the guy I was thinking of is Gary uh, Gygax, G-Y. I don't know. Everyone listening to this knows how to pronounce this. But that's the guy with that came up with Dungeons & Dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a famous Dungeons & Dragons story that you remind me of with Sam's story about Michigan State, where there was a kid who was way into Dungeons and & Dragons. And they would, he and his friends would, like, at times, I think, act out or, like, have, like, you know, the real-life role-playing sort of vibe to it. And he went missing and there's the belief that he went into the tunnel system that ex- that connected all of Michigan State's campus and set up traps and it killed himself in the middle of it and if you try to find him you're going to like get fucked by like this dungeon sequence of stuff but and so they closed it all off and it's all closed off still to this day but uh they found him in Florida he just ran away oh, I, I, I think you're describing the plot of the goonies yeah i know but it's been used like the story is used in these other movies and, 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 and it's being repurposed because it's like, it was, I mean, it's a powerful kind of idea, especially at that time when everyone was just like, 
this is like devil worship and these kids are you know it's making them crazy and blah blah, blah. it's like pokemon full circle isn't the kid that played data was um is he korean american i have no idea because i remember he he played a short round in uh temple of doom and then uh was in goonies and then now he like has like i think he's in the new loki season and he's in everything everywhere all at once like he has this like i feel like he disappeared off of the off of the map for a while like he was like a, one of the hottest kid actors Go, doesn't he's not around for for a while and now he's back and he like he's vietnamese born chinese american oh okay there you go so vietnamese Vietnamese born Chinese. My roommate and and uh, my roommate through college was uh, first generation American. He was half Vietnamese, half Chinese. Nice. Man, so, I could have made him so bad with all the you lie, Doctor Jones, all through college. Man, I missed out on so many opportunities. <laughs> well, so true story. Uh, in college, um, my I had uh, one roommate was uh first generation chinese one roommate was first generation vietnamese and one roommate was first generation vietnamese chinese and then me no. uh, <laughs> yeah uh and uh when their family would come visit uh, we lived together for like three years so like not an insignificant amount of time um uh, and so like they would come over for holidays and stuff like that i'd hang out we'd you know do all the kind of like stuff for the holidays uh -huh. i would take them to like i drive them to casinos they'd buy us like beer and liquor even though we were underage it was awesome it was great yep. uh but anyways um they kept calling me this like one name i just figured it was like a term of endearment or something like that and it's like my my my, my roommate friends you know after about three years when i was moving out i was like you know i just got to come clean with you like that thing my family was calling you this whole time uh it just means white person they like never knew your name they, they've just been calling you hey white person for <laughs> for three years that's perfect i was like yeah well i guess that checks out he's like yeah just <laughs> oh my god so, so the guys are talking about uh, very little, very little like, english <laughs> i have to tell you the key hoi kwan the actor we're talking about that's in he's also in uh is in loki but also everything everywhere all at once would be another mm -hmm. thing for right now but he was also in 1983 in a tv miniseries called the big eunuch and the little carpenter holy cow <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy um oh i thought it was a retelling of the the gospel of matthew yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, oh my god Please. I don't know where I don't know what country this is from. If it's from uh, Vietnam or China, I can't tell. It doesn't have any real information. But yeah, the big eunuch and the little carpenter. I would pay money I to hope, watch. I that. hope that's a translation error and that it's an animated, uh, an animated <laughs> short film. <laughs> I hope that's just what it is. So, all right. Do you have a favorite line from this section? Um, I do. But what did you do? You have one that's at the hand uh, at. Yeah, I, I loved this was just so searingly funny. Like, first, I thought the zine uh, on Asian diaspora, uh, oh, yeah, slanted, slanted plus enchanted, uh, is just a diabolical name. Uh, but but it's on page 216. Uh, sign me up, I could use mentoring. You're funny. The program is called Tell It Slant. Not crazy about that name, it's from Emily Dickinson, even so. <laughs> i do love that one thing that we didn't talk <laughs> that is like super sneaky funny i think you know he's he's super smart crazy well read and like such a gentleman and uh but he has got a whip smart uh sense of humor he's he's good yeah absolutely i'm gonna this is not the line itself is what it is but uh it implies it's about one other part that we didn't exactly talk about, but that's, that's uh, I really like. Where one Friday morning with unusual urgency, Tanner asked me to build acronyms that might catch fire, um, which is like his job of just coming up with acronyms to throw out into the world to see which ones catch on, such as YOLT, You Only Live Twice, and WITAF, 
what in the actual fuck? <laughs> and his wife's like, it's a medical miracle. He thinks I am, I am, am, but like those, and he references that comes up in the beginning in that first scene when he's at the party where they keep like remembering his acronyms. Remember that, he, that one? Remember that one? Like, remember that? Yeah, yeah. And like, you got your job so because fun. you can come up with acronyms. It's like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I love acronyms of, the, of this sort in here, even though like, Whenever people do them, like the kids, I have no idea what they're talking about. I always have to look those up too. That's back to our Urban Dictionary problem, being old. But I love that that shows up in here multiple times. That's super fun. But I don't have the schedule open, so I'm not sure how far we go uh, for next week. Um, but it's probably around 60 pages. Uh, we will be back on Thursday. And we will cover whatever it is. It'll be in the show notes so you'll see it. So until then, you can like, review, um, do all the things that you're supposed to do, recommend it to friends, give us a good five-star rating. The answer is we go to page 342. Um, vamp there just long enough to get that. So up to 342. This is a bit longer section. Uh, and we'll be back to do that. You know, subscribe, like, recommend, five stars. Anything you want to add, Brian? Nothing at all. Have a happy new year. Yeah, I've started to 2024. I do like the recurring joke that I'm seeing of how nobody is saying like 2024 is going to be the year. Thank God 2023 is over. I'm going to kill it in 2024 because we've all learned that fucking lesson. <laughs> well, well, we'll do our next episode. We'll do our year end lists like everybody does. So, And, uh, and, well, and uh, uh, resolutions. Yeah, we'll do film of the year, song of the year, and... Um, and book of the year and a resolution speaking of if you're watching this on friday december 29th at 1 50 p.m you can turn into wxxi in rochester and i'll be on there to talk about the year in books for 10 minutes all right i'll check that out yep uh we'll see how it goes all right take care everyone have a good new year's eve yeah i'd rather cut off my finger